Hello, Albert's List. It is Lee here. So I'm going to wait for a few seconds while more people join. The lighting is kind of weird today. Um, you guys can see I'm a human, so I think it's all good. All right, so let's talk about how to make companies beg to hire you, okay? We are talking basically going from begging companies to hire you to doing a complete 180 sharing the secrets that I teach my clients so that they've turned things around in their own job search. They've been able to go from, you know, oh my God, why do I constantly get rejected? What is going on? To being able to choose, you know, to be the person who can choose from many different companies who have the options to make that happen, all right? So let's talk about this. So let me know what your current situation is with job hunting right now. So just drop down below. Let me know what has been going on. Um, are you getting people, hey, Omar, welcome. Are you getting people to say, hey, when can you start working? Or are you basically going on interviews and not even being excited because you just feel like, you know what, they're just going to reject me again. What is the freaking point? Uh, why do I keep going to these? I, you know, maybe you just think that's the way things are for you. Let me know if that is what it's like. Um, all right. Okay, I thought somebody had a comment. But... Let's talk about this because it is. I actually saw a comment earlier on today and they're like, you know, how is this even possible? I basically am begging for companies to, uh, to take me, right? And I get it. I know it's hard. I know it's tough. I've been job hunting, um, you know, before as well. And I actually go through the job searching process with every one of my clients. And let me tell you this, okay? Um, there are three things that you need to know when it comes to becoming that type of person who gets companies literally begging to hire you, okay? First thing, I'm not flipping you guys off, this is one, okay? This is my <laughs> index finger. Um, so first thing is, you actually believe that it's possible for companies to beg to hire you, okay? Um, here's the thing, if you don't believe that it's possible for you, there's no way it's gonna happen because you're not gonna do things that you don't believe is possible, right? Same thing with the guy who ran the, he ran like the four minute mile or something. Before that, nobody was able to run it because they just didn't think it was possible. And then afterwards, tons of tons of people started following in his footsteps. And now, you know, there's, you know, I'll probably Google this a little bit later, but there are tons of people who can do four minute miles. Maybe there's somebody who was from your high school too, right? So I want you guys to understand the first step is to actually believe that it is possible for you. It is possible for you to go from begging companies to hire you to having companies beg for you. Now, are there going to be some work that you have to do to work on yourself, to work on how desirable you are in terms of, you know, employment wise? Are you going to have to do some work? Hell yes, you're going to do some work. But here's the thing. If you constantly go into an interview and your internal monologue in your head spinning around is thinking, oh, I don't know why would they would hire me, you know, I hope I don't bomb this, you know, oh my god, I should have taken computer science, or oh my god, um, what if this doesn't work out? Even though people can't hear your thoughts, people can actually realize, oh, this person is not so confident because there is a vibe that you put out into the world, okay? And you'll see people who are like, maybe not super duper hot, but they have so much confidence, they have so much like belief in themselves to make things happen, that people are just magnetically drawn to them. I don't know if you guys have seen like, you know, super short dudes um, who are amazing with women, and it has nothing to do with their height, but everything to do with what they believe about themselves. Same thing with you. You have to believe that you are somebody who has a ton to offer and you're somebody who is basically just like um, so magnet magnetically amazing who can make so much money for a company that it doesn't matter what the salary is. It doesn't even matter how much they're paying you because it would be stupid for them not to hire you. Is any of this making sense to you guys? 
Because anytime, okay, I got one reaction from Omar, thank you. Um, sometimes I wonder if what I'm saying is even making sense. But, okay, so let me know if you have any questions, if you're, like, curious as to how you can make this happen for yourself, or you're like, you know, this is complete bullshit. How? Okay. So, hey ho, welcome. So, one thing is that, um... I don't know about your specific situation. I mean, I've, like, kind of talked to you a little bit, but I don't know your specific situation. Okay, James, thank you. Um, but first thing is, here's the thing, okay? People think you have to, like, people think once they make the money, they'll be confident, but actually, you have to be that type of person who knows that you're rich before you make money happen, too, right? So here's the thing. Nobody can convince you to, to believe but yourself, right? So you just have to believe that you have internal worth, which brings me to my second point. Yeah, totally the energy. The second point is that you can't expect for others to do your marketing homework. Okay, I'm going to say it again, because it's so important. You cannot expect another person to do your marketing homework. So hey, Margaret, awesome to see you here. Um, so what do I mean by that? Just because you do things really well doesn't mean that people know why they should care. Okay, so here's what I mean. If you're like a straight A student, good for you. Um, I used to be one of those people. <laughs> um, but if you are not telling people that you're a straight A student, nobody would know, right? And maybe they can look at the scores if it's public or whatever. But ultimately, if people don't know you exist, you're going to be unemployed, okay? And when you don't do the work of convincing other people why you should be hired and you just say, oh, I'm from, a, I was born from a small village in China and I was, you know, graduated th uh, three years ago and I have this degree, that degree. Nobody cares. Okay? <laughs> Nobody cares because here's why. Nobody cares because you're not saying things relevant to the company. The company doesn't give a shit where you went to school. The company does not care. So don't listen to this broadcast if you have kids around because I curse and swear. Um, <laughs> you know, you have to do the research. Why was the company you work for important? Why was your internship relevant? Why was any of these things going to matter to the company? That is a marketing work that you absolutely need to do. Okay, hey, welcome. I see one of my clients. Hey, welcome, Chayanthia. Uh, and what was I going to say? Yeah, you have to do the work of why, out of all the software engineers that I could hire, why are you the best one? That's actually the marketing work. Awesome. Yeah, so why are the things that you say are important important? You can, okay, like people are dumb. People are, you know, are lazy. So do the work for them. Tell them why you're awesome, not just what you do because... Guess what? Other people do what you do, too. I don't know. The lighting is, like, really bothering me for some reason. Let me do here. Okay, you guys can see my facial features. But anyways, okay, this is all live, guys, okay? Um, so that means you can ask any questions that you want to. But here's the thing. If you can't answer why I should hire you and you're trying to, like, just say what school you went to or you're trying to say, like, this is... Um, the the internship that I did, that is not enough, okay? That is not enough, people. Uh, absolutely make sure that you're doing the marketing work. And the third thing, okay? The third thing is that you have to actually be, like, literally doing the work, okay? When you only have one company in the pipeline, just like if you're just dating, like, one person, and when that person, like, doesn't, you know, decides not to push you forward, you're going to be devastated. That's not a good strategy, okay? Say it in 30 seconds or less. Cool. Um, but basically, you want to be constantly going on interviews, okay? I don't care if you like it or not. Also with dating, you don't have to like the person to go on a date with them. Just practice, you know? Because here's the thing. People say, okay, I didn't have chemistry with this person or whatever. But really... Dating chemistry is when you consistently go on dates all the time and you create that chemistry within yourself, okay? Boom. I just dropped, like, an amazing dating analogy. 
Um, Omar, you're the expert in the in the dude dating department, so let me let me know what your thoughts are. Um, but seriously, guys, like you think that chemistry, like you think desirability is outside of yourself? That's not true. Desirability and people who want to hire you, that value comes from within. Okay, and you have to cultivate that shit inside. Okay, cultivate the fact that yeah. I have so this is my client story, okay? My client actually helped the company generate a million dollars, okay? And he didn't even talk about it on interviews. Uh, maybe he'll be watching this later, but like he's such a genius, right? So same thing. You may be a super genius, but maybe you're not even telling people how awesome you are. And you're thinking, oh my god, um, is this realistic? You know, are people gonna think weird things about me? Here's the thing, okay? You need to keep going on interviews, not because you know that's a perfect company for you but just for practice this is the most important advice that i can give to you here and really listen up okay you have to get as many interviews as possible to cultivate that interview energy within of desirability right you notice that once you go on more and more interviews you either become really good or actually both. You could become really, really good at interviewing, but also you cultivate this attitude where I don't give a fuck. You know, I don't give a fuck if you hire me or not. I know who I am. I practice so many times. I know how awesome I am and take it or leave it. And that is where, um, <laughs> yeah. thank you, Margaret. Um, yeah, but seriously, like, you know, um, but really, it's like people think, you know, oh my god, that person is so charismatic, that person is so, you know, great with uh, jobs. That stuff took work, okay? I agree with you, you have to be in love with yourself, with the other person to love you, believe? Yes, exactly, right? So again, coming, like, talking about like what I said before about um, being sold on yourself, right? If you don't think you're amazing, then why would anybody else think you're amazing either, right? You guys know what I'm saying. Awesome. All of my friends are on this live and supporting it. Maybe all the people who don't agree with me are like, this person is crazy. I am crazy. Um, but anyways, like to recap, like the three things. First, like you have to believe that you are amazing. And then number two, you actually have to do the research yourself. Okay. Nobody's going to like say, oh my God, this person graduated and they did an internship for three years. Let's hire them right away. No, you have to talk about... <laughs> I crack myself up, um, even if I'm not funny. Um, so, how can I believe in myself? So let's do this. Let's do this backwards. That's a good question, Tony. So, so I'm assuming you don't believe in yourself as much as you want to, right? So let's list out the reasons. Why don't you believe in yourself? This is fun. This is live coaching. So let me know, why don't you believe in yourself right now? And what? Do, do, do. I love actually actual questions. You you guys know like how Margaret you probably know it's weird when people are not responding. It's like you're just talking to a screen, and I do think it's easier to talk to a screen than a real person. Very very introverted person, but I bring it. Okay, I bring it on the lives. I just save all my energy. I take naps and then just like go twice a week on Albert's list to like you know release the energy. But anyways, let me know why you guys don't believe in yourself. Why? Is it because, like, you don't, what do you do, like, industry role? Okay, so I am a success coach for immigrant professionals. So I deal with H-1Bs and OPTs. That is what I do. I have also coached Americans as well in career coaching. Okay, so, Tony, I don't have much experience on my resume. I think I'm underqualified in most of the listings in my field. Okay, so why do you think experience matters? So I'm not saying this because, like, I, I don't think it matters at all. But companies hire people who are new grads all the time, right? So if experience was the only thing, why don't they just hire 40-year-olds or 50-year-olds? They don't, right? So when you talk about experience, yes, it's better than not having any experience at all. But the fact is, you're actually a blank slate, which is a good thing for companies because they can just teach you their way and you're not going to be like, oh, this is how it's done. And also, what are the results that you produce? So I don't know about your situation, but like... Companies hire you because you can make more money for them than they're paying you, right? So what is the result that you produce? Because the result is way more important than the experience. 
And the next thing, I'm, I think I'm underqualified. Okay, so here's the thing. This is an excellent. Thank you so much for, you know, sharing this because everybody else can learn from it. Like, when you say you're underqualified, it actually doesn't even matter. Okay, so let me explain why. You're not the person deciding, right? So when you say to yourself, okay, I'm underqualified, I can't make this happen. Actually, that's not true because the company is a person deciding, right? So if you just apply they will make the decision for you. And I'll tell you like my story. So five years ago, I was hired as a business analyst, right? So what is my background? I have zero experience in business analysis. Like even after I was offered the job, I had to go to the business library to check out what it was because I didn't understand what a business analyst did, okay? And I graduated with a totally useless urban studies degree. No offense to people who got it, but you guys know what I'm talking about. I didn't want to be, you know, spending my my life in City Hall listening to people complain and basically relive Parks and Rec, uh, but without the awesome cast, right? So I had nothing in terms of experience. I had nothing in terms of um, qualifications, but I just went for it. And my boss said, okay. And here's the thing. I did my research. You know, I was positioning myself, you know, I was making websites. I was making about $200 off of my passive income websites. And I told him that's what I did, right? So I did have something that I accomplished, but... I was able to position myself outside of just regular experience, outside of my school, on my major, and I was able to get the job. So I don't think you're, I don't think experience is thing, it's how you, what the, what's the result, right? So let me know what, what the job is you're looking for, and then like how you're, how you're talking about yourself, okay? For confidence boost, figure out what you can teach them and talk about that on interviews. Boom, amazing, awesome. Omar should be doing this with me. Um, <laughs> maybe we could do like a joint, uh, I don't, I'll figure it out later, tech stuff, but anyways, yeah. Anyways, should we talk about Omar's stories? Do you want me to share, share with them your story? Cause you're so, like, your H1B story was fucking amazing. Um, let me know if I have your permission to share though. Hey, Krish, welcome. So I'm gonna do some shout outs. Who else is on the line? You're down. All right, we'll figure this figure this tech stuff out. So let me know if anybody has any questions about belief in themselves. Tony, let me know if it totally makes sense or no. Yeah, Omar, you basically said, you know what, I'm gonna get an H1B no matter what, and then you did. That's actually what I remember from your story. I don't. Maybe sometimes I don't even remember parts of your story, but just your attitude. Okay, Margaret, I wish I could say I had interview issues. I did not interview for my current role as a nurse, even as a new grad. Yes. Lunchtime F-bomb. Fuck yeah, Tammy. Um, <laughs> you guys are awesome. Um, Margaret. Margaret is another amazing nurse and writer who went live yesterday. She's freaking amazing and hilarious. Um, yeah, I think with nursing, it's like you they literally beg you. <laughs> you know, with nursing, it's like they beg you to um, work for them because it's so, you know, in short supply. So I love it. Awesome. Thank you, Tammy. You're my new favorite person. Okay. Um, anybody have any other questions? Because you have no questions. So obviously, this is a live about, you know, scratching kind of the surface of it. I'm going to talk about more in depth about how you can basically um, get your... Oh, I can't exit it without going there. Okay. Let me just type this in. Um... I'm going to do a webinar on Sunday, guys. Okay. Oh, I can see my face now. Okay. So anyways, let me just do this. Um, on Sunday, I'm going to be doing a webinar on how to get H-1B companies to hire you. Um, so it's going to be over at the successfulimmigrant.com slash H-1B webinar. So we talk about what it is that I just talked about, but specifically for international students. So Hit up the successfulimmigrant.com slash H1B webinar. I hope I spelled the URL right. If not, I'll correct it. But anybody have any questions so far about anything? About how this is going to be possible? And obviously, you know, I'm just doing a live right now. I don't know your individual situation. So the more you can tell me, the better it's going to be. So let me know. If no question is going to be weird, me staring at you, staring at me. Okay, Margaret, I did have an advantage, though. I work there as a tech and plan my transition like a ninja. Hell yeah! Hell yeah for planning ninja transitions! 
I love that phrase. I'm gonna steal that phrase, okay? Uh, Zainab, I would like to know how to get an interview in the first place. I'm applying for companies. I don't know anyone working there. Awesome question. So, the, thank you to the internet, you know, like anybody can find any company, right? So for you, I would say go on LinkedIn, look at people that you're connected to, and go from not knowing anybody to start messaging them. And that's, that's, the, that's the thing that I teach my private clients as well. I give them the template to message, to reach out to people, and then they're able to make that connection. Because really now it's like, there's no excuse for any one of us to say like, oh, I don't know anyone. Like I freaking went to um, Europe by myself. I didn't know anyone, but I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. And I started meeting people at the hostels. I went to places where people would be, right? With LinkedIn, there's you can just start connecting with people right away. Let me know if that makes sense. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Krish, have H-1B regulations changed compared to last year? I've been evident out of the loop. Good, good, good question. Um, I think what Trump did, he's just like, he's gonna, he signed thing that's gonna enforce it, but I don't think any, anything really changed. But good question. Don't listen, don't ask me for legal advice, guys, okay? Like, I'm not a lawyer. I help you get the job, but I don't, I don't deal with the contracts. I can refer you to lawyers, but that's it. Okay, Angelica, I really want to go into design or communications. I feel like I'm at a weird point in my life, a young career where I want to go into an industry that's very close gaming, but I also want to go into uh, uh, building my own brand as well. Any tips for making these decisions? Okay, so here's the thing. I think decision making is going to sound simplistic, but it is simplistic. I think you know deep down inside what you want to do, right? So you can do both. I didn't know gaming was closed, though. So you can just be like a designer for like a gaming company, right? And you can also take projects on the side. But are you asking like what you should do? Because like I can't really tell you what to do. But I can tell you that, like, most of the time, you kind of know. Like, you have an inner knowing, you know, women's intuition. Like, I always knew that I was going to be a business person, even though I wasn't, like, in business. I was, like, eventually I was going to do it because I was just so obsessed with it in my head, right? I was listening to, like, Marie Forleo, Ramit Sethi, like, buying all these programs all the time. And I would just always think about it when I was thinking about, you know, my goals or dreams for the future. That was what I wanted to do. So... Um, yeah, correct me if I'm, if I'm, like, totally just not understanding your question, but I think, like, ultimately you kind of know in your head, but also you can just go, go at it all at once, you know, and then see what happens. Uh, okay, Zainab, really works well in the U.S., doing this in Israel, I'll be relocating soon, really get stuck, I don't want to hear back from any message. Okay, so here's the thing, good point, you are going to get people who don't talk to you, you're going to get people who ignore you, you know, same thing with, um just in real life, like, sometimes you think you really hit it well with some, hit it off really well with somebody, and they don't feel the same way, right, but the thing is, you have to play the numbers game, you have to make sure that you are actually, um, being that type of person who speaks to so many people that one person doesn't matter, same thing with this whole live, right, I was like, you're supposed to be going on so many interviews that it doesn't even matter, um, if one person, re you, you probably even forget, right, you just focus on the people who actually like you, all right. Most companies are willing to sponsor only candidates or senior roles, not recent grads. Was the best way to say I can sort of ensure I have a company sponsor me H1B next year. Go on as many interviews as possible and don't think about that only willing to sponsor for senior. Some do. You know, if it's Amazon, yeah, they're only sponsoring senior people. But you have to switch your mindset into thinking, I'm the shit, I'm amazing. Yeah, and it's a numbers game. Exactly, Margaret. Um... So you have to ask yourself, I'm going to make this inevitable for me. I'm just going to go to as many companies, as many interviews as possible. And that's what's going to happen for me. Does that make sense? Like, you just like, instead of thinking, I don't know if this is going to happen for me. You just like, this is going to be so inevitable for me. I'm just going to keep going. Maybe this time doesn't work. Next year, ne next week doesn't work. I'm going to keep going and going and going until one day it works out. Let me know if that makes sense. Tell me, I'm past the millennial phase and don't have, ah, so many questions. Uh, don't have a tech background. How to make the company recruiter, hire manager, beg. My ex-husband is the last person that begged for me to marry him. Awesome. Oh my God, ex-husbands. I can talk about that, but I choose not to. <laughs> All right. So here's the thing. If you absolutely need a tech background, 
then it wouldn't hurt to just learn it, right? I mean, most of the tech stuff, it's just like, once you learn it, then you have it, right? And if you can position yourself as that, because sometimes if you have too much tech, then you need somebody else, right? So think about what is a skill that would help the company make money that makes you different from other people. So I guess two, two sides of the coin. If you really absolutely need like the technical skills, then might as well just take the class, right? So catch that up. Um, but if, um, if it's like not necessary, because I'm sure you have a lot of skills as well. Think about how you can reposition it. Because if a lot of tech people don't know the soft skills, that's kind of what I do. Like I work with a lot of STEM field people, a lot of PhDs, a lot of like master's degree students who have are so good. Like you guys are going to save the world from a zombie apocalypse, but they just don't know how to promote themselves, right? I know how to promote myself, so that's what I teach them. So one side, if you really need the technical stuff, take the classes, but also how can you position yourself as the best person? All right, let me know if that helps. Angelica, uh, I feel like a problem with less experience getting your resume notice. Feels like your resume lost in the sea of apps. How do I get my resume notice? Okay, okay. This is what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to hold a resume burning ceremony in Albert's list, okay? Mark my words. I'm going to make this happen because I've been thinking about this for a really long time. Your resume, 400 other people submit on LinkedIn as well. Nobody even looks at it. So... I'm going to write this down. Thank you, Angelica. Resume burning ceremony. You want to do this instead, okay? You want to connect with people who have the ability to hire you via a message. Because like a thousand years ago, there were no resumes. Nobody fucking knew what a resume was. Nobody knew what Microsoft Word was. They just connected with real life people, right? So I would suggest you to directly message people via email or some sort of a messenger, tell them who you are and actually individually reach out to them because guess what? People are scared as shit of talking to real people, okay? So just throw away your resume, stop doing it because it's not not getting noticed because everyone is doing the same thing, right? So you wanna do something different, reach out to that person and tell them, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do, let's have a coffee meeting. Let's have a phone call. Let's do an email conversation. You're going to stand out from all the 4,000 resumes. I went a little bit excited. I don't know if you guys can tell. A little bit overstimulated right now. But seriously, like, if you think the resume is not working, it's not working. you got to send out messages directly to people. Great question. Let me know if that helps. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, totally. Okay, I need something in office operation. Okay, so... Look at your skills and look at everything that you're like they're looking for. See if it matches. If there's any of a gap or any place where you can be amazing, uh, say that. So let me know if that helps. Uh, got a log out. Thank you. You're welcome. EA admin. Yeah. So I guess if you're like an admin, you kind of have to learn some skills. But um, just learn it. It's not gonna be. Just say you you know it, and then if they ask you to demonstrate, you'll know. Um, awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm actually really having a lot of fun here. I just realized this year, so I'm not even going to do anything that is not fun for me. All right, cool. Any other questions? If not, I'm going to eat. <laughs> is this a good time? Is noon a good time, people? Because I feel like it's just, like, I'm like a very much like a morning person. So like whenever I decided, you know what, I'm going to do it. I just message Albert and you know, get his permission to go live in this group. I really think, okay. PM versus SWE, real what a better chance of getting a sponsorship? Okay. Um, this is a good question. I actually don't know, so I'm not going to answer it. I don't want to, you know, trick you to thinking I know it. But look on my visa jobs. Look at how many how many have been sponsored for each. Okay. Thanks for the session. Is wealthyimmigrants.com. No, it's not. Oh, my God. So, Leonard, some somebody, like, took wealthyimmigrants.com. So, mine is .co. Okay. Once I make enough money, I'm gonna negotiate with them to like to like sell me their domain because I I freaking want it. Um, let me just look at it. Wealthyimmigrants.com. I'm coming. I'm coming for Jessica. Uh, let me let me check. That's funny. It's a Chinese woman who also took it. Uh, she has a book or something. Yeah, it's not me. It's wealthyimmigrants.co. But thank you, Leonard. Yeah. Damn, they wrote a book about Canada. 
Fuck, I have to talk to her now. Um, but my website is a successful immigrant. But I'm going to get her website. Uh, Haley, this is a good time for me. We are two hours behind. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, so awesome. Great to hear from everybody. Again, well, successfulimmigrant.com slash H1B webinar. Um, yeah, so... All right, thanks everyone for, you know, being on here. I had a lot of fun. I know if you guys could tell, maybe I'll take a nap from overstimulation. If you have any questions about career stuff, tag me in the group. Um, I don't get tagged as often now because I think you guys just know to go to, like, my visa jobs. But if you guys have any, like, questions, tag me. I'll let you know. And see you at the webinar on Sunday. Sunday, March, no, <laughs> Sunday, May the 14th at noon. So I'll see you there and talk.